recording. Right. So I add the glycerol into the center. I hope that smokes a good salt. So instantaneous combustion. What have we got here? We've got a powerful oxidizing agent. What does that actually really mean? In a simple level, if you're describing oxidation reactions, what are you adding? Something has been oxidized, therefore you're adding oxygen. Now you could, if you've got the correct, if you look up the correct formula for glycerol, all you have to do to actually get that thing is just basically it's effectively burning. It takes oxygen from a good source of oxygen, which is potassium from manganese. Would you like to do that again quickly? Or yes. you so you can see when these have labels on, let's say, oxidizing agent, and you can see the O with a fire, you can actually see that it actually means something, don't you? Some materials that you use in the real world, like um, creosote. Creosote is a dark, oily stuff that you can actually put on timber. I don't think you can actually get it anymore, but they used to sell it in places like Bunnings. And if you actually have that in a, on a rag, and you leave it in a warm, airy environment, they've been known to burst into flames. Because it's the same sort of thing, somehow these materials can do that. So I'm just going to go around the edge, just one drop. Uh, the colour is lilac. It's lilac because potassium is actually burning in the flame. You get it. Now you could actually make whatever colour you want. So if I wanted yellow, what would you use? What colour gives you? What colour gives you? Um, Potassium gives you the lilac. What metal gives you a yellow flame test? Sodium. Sodium would give you a yellow flame. If you want copper, sorry, if you want green, you'd use a copper. Barium would give you, oh, it smells a bit. So I'll just do one more and then we can actually think about the activity that I want to choose today. Notice the table, that there are bits of solid around the table here. If I don't wipe those up, we could probably have a fire in the room later, because that's an oxidizing agent probably left. A bit more. So that's the, uh, yeah. These rooms are very, very sensitive on the smoke alarm, so you've got to be careful. Okay, I won't put that there by the fire. Get this out of the way. Right, I'll just leave that running away. Now, let's just have a look at the pack sheet for today. Okay. Now, dichloromethane's been used again today to pick up halogens. So this grey box here. Can you actually disregard anything with dichloromethane because it just simply doesn't work? Remember that problem? Because you, remember I told you it should form layers? We were using it the other day. So you can try it if you want to. Follow the, the, the method as it is, but it's unlikely to actually work. I'll just stop that because I know I'm 